If you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the Dell XPS 13. It's one of my favorite ultra portables. I got the Dell XPS 13 in-house right now. I've been putting it through its paces. Here's my review. Hi, my name's Andrew, and this is the review of the Dell XPS 13 9360 running the KB Lake processor. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Late last year, Dell released the Dell XPS 13 with the KB Lake processor, the 7th gen processor that had a lot of promise. Well, I finally got my hands on it and I wanted to give my take on it. Let's see if it lived up to the hype. This is the AMD Tech Review of the Dell XPS 13 9360. So what's new with the Dell XPS 13 9360? Well, you get a 7th generation Intel KB Lake processor, battery increased from 56 watt hours to 60 watt hours. You get killer wireless 1535, and it comes in the rose gold color scheme for all configurations. And of course, you get your optional fingerprint scanner for an extra $25 as an add-on. I ordered the unit from Amazon and unfortunately they sent me the wrong unit. I thought I was getting the QHD Plus version with the Infinity Touch Display. Instead, they sent me a 1080p version but with a touch display which I didn't even know existed. I only thought the 1080p came in the non-touch version. Well boy, was I glad they made that mistake because I was really impressed with this 1080p touch panel and I was really excited about the extra battery life I was getting out of this unit. We'll talk more about that later in this review. But what you get under the hood is the Intel Core i5-7200U CPU. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM and it was supposed to have 256 gigs of PCIe SSD. Another mistake Amazon made by sending me one with 128 gigabyte SSD. Needless to say, this unit is going back, but I still gave it a full review nonetheless. The Dell XPS 13 weighs 2.9 pounds for the touch version and the non-touch version weighs 2.7 pounds. This is a pretty thin and light design and really portable, so I really like it to take it on the go for meetings and go to coffee shops with. And as we've come to expect on the XPS 13 and 15 lines, you get the carbon fiber on the inside and you get the all aluminum on the outside with that rock solid, sturdy build quality that we've come to expect. One thing to keep in mind with the carbon fiber on the interior is you're going to get a lot of fingerprints and smudges on it, so you will be cleaning it very often. But the star of this show is, of course, its 13.3 inch Infinity Edge display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Now, I didn't even know this version existed, and it has this 165 pixels per inch. What I thought I was getting was the one I've reviewed in the past, the 3200 by 1800 QHD Plus version that has a 276 pixels per inch. Now, they, of course, they both have 16 by 9 aspect ratios, and of course, it has that Infinity Edge touch display with the virtually best design. Now brightness is very good on both units over 300 nits and color accuracy was spot on with the non-touch version at 93.6% sRGB and the touch version being 105.7% sRGB. Needless to say these are very good panels. And of course, you gotta love the Infinity Edge display with its 5.2 millimeter virtually bezel-less design. You really can't go wrong. This is the forerunner of those designs that all these other companies are starting to copy. Now, as far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. You get a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 supported, which is always a nice touch, USB 3.0 Type-A full size, and you get a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Next to that is a power light indicator button, always a nice handy feature to have. And on the other side, you get a second USB 3.0 type A and wait for it, you guessed it, a full size SD card slot, something the late 2016 MacBook Pros don't have. Now, if you saw my review of the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, you know I was a big fan of the fact that it had a fingerprint sensor that's Windows Hello compatible. Well, for $25 extra, you can add the same fingerprint sensor to the Dell XPS 13. 
and it worked really well from what I understand. Now this unit that I have doesn't have it, but I did test it out on the XPS 13 2-in-1 and it worked as advertised. So I don't anticipate any changes in terms of the fingerprint sensor with the Dell XPS 13. Nice touch to make that as an available feature, although I think it should be standard on any Dell XPS 13 going forward. Now, I'm actually a big fan of the Dell XPS 13's keyboard. Now, if you saw my review last year, I thought it was comfortable to type on. This is no exception. The KB Lake version is virtually the same keyboard at 1.2 millimeters of key travel. I thought the keys were nicely sized, nicely spread out, and was comfortable to type on in terms of long periods of typing. And I also appreciate the fact that there's two-stage backlighting really worked well. I have no complaints on that front. Now Dell decided to go with the Precision Trackpad technology and I'm glad they did. I'm a big fan of Precision and it worked well. Windows 10 just as worked as advertised. Two finger scrolling was a pleasure. Overall I'd have to say this is a very nice trackpad. There are two side firing speakers on each side of the device. I thought the sound was rich, I thought the volume was great, and I think that this is a really good speaker considering the fact this is such a small device. Now let's hear them in action. Let's take a look and a listen at our latest video. my channel you know I'm a big fan of the Chewy HI-12 one of my favorite two in ones now as far as the webcam is concerned it's fine the only problem is its placement once again Dell has not corrected a big issue that I've had with the Dell XPS 13 in the past the fact that they put the webcam on the lower left hand corner of the display and that gives you a very unflattering up your nose webcam action something I think that she should have corrected and I think they could have corrected but has chose to ignore not good now as far as performance is concerned, you get a KB Lake processor, it did a 6923 on the Geekbench 4 test. On the Octane 2.0 test, it did 23,687. So far, these are very good scores. And the Crystal Disk Mark test, the disk write and read speeds are 546.2 and 336.4 respectively. Now that's because this is running an M2 SATA drive, not the PCIe SSD that I thought I was getting, and that's why you're seeing those scores. I like the fact that this unit has Bluetooth 4.1 and the very welcome addition of Killer Wireless 1535 that has excellent range and really very good throughputs. Overall, I'd have to say on all fronts of wireless, this did very well. But the real star of this show is its epic battery life. Now keep in mind, this is the full HD version that is a touch display, which I didn't know existed, but it does exist. And here's how it did. It's got a 60 watt hour battery and it did 11 hours and three minutes. That's YouTube, light gaming, web browsing under the edge browser, Photoshop, email, Netflix, and the like. This is more of my everyday kind of use. The non-touch version will get over 13 hours easily and the QHD Plus version will get about three to four hours less. This is the undisputed king of battery life for 2017 in the ultra portable category. So at the end of the day, can I recommend the Dell XPS 13 9360? Is it worth your hard earned money? And the answer is absolutely. This is one of the best 13 inch ultra portables you can buy right now. Here's what I like. I love its superb battery life, one of the best in class as far as that's concerned. I like its 7th gen Intel Core KB Lake processor performance. It did very well. I like its Infinity Edge display. The fact that it's a 1080p panel is even better, giving you better battery life in my opinion. I like it. the fact that it has more ports than its competitors. It's got a soft touch carbon fiber deck inside. And I like the fact that you have good speakers produced from a very small device. But as with any device, there are going to be things that need improvement. And here they are. I think the fact that it still has that awkward webcam placement that has plagued the Dell XPS 13 since its inception is a real shame. And the fact that it's not as thin and light as competitors might turn some off. And if this is a real big fingerprint magnet, you're going to see those fingerprints, you're going to see those smudges, you will be cleaning this very often. But with those few negatives aside, I have to say this checks all the boxes that you'd want in a 13 inch ultra portable, really making this the best choice in my opinion right now in early 2017. It's got the design you want, it's got the infinity edge display, it's got that epic battery life, it's got good performance and great build quality all coming together to make this the AMD Tech editor's choice in the 13 inch ultra portable category, making this certainly worth your money. 
So what do you think about the Dell XPS 13? Do you think it checks all the boxes that you'd want in an ultra portable? I think it does. That's why I gave it the AMD Tech Editor's Choice Award for the 13-inch Ultra Portable category, a an award I don't give very lightly. I love its all-day battery life, and I was pleasantly surprised, by accident of course, to get the full HD version of the Infinity Touch Display. Not the QHD Plus that I thought I was getting, but the full HD nonetheless. And it really was very sharp, and it gave me that touchscreen that I wanted but it also gave me the battery life. And I think that's the killer feature here is that you're getting three to four extra hours of battery and you're not sacrificing the touch. That's why I like this model. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Does it live up to your expectations if you've already picked one up? Are you considering getting one? I'm curious to know. Leave a comment in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.